Hi, it's Alaska Granny. Having food storage is very important. We need to stockpile food so that we have the things we need to provide food and meals for our family, no matter what the future holds. We know there have been shortages and problems in the last few months due to the coronavirus COVID pandemic, but then we've also had natural disasters that have made foods hard to come by. We've also had job losses and economic downturns that have made it difficult for people to have enough to feed their families. These are all good reasons to have extra food on hand and to build a long-term food storage and a prepper pantry. I have a list of 12 prepper pantry mistakes that people make when they're putting together their long-term food storage. The number one food mistake that people forget is having enough water. You need at least one gallon per person per day for many days. You need water for drinking. You also need water for cooking, for hygiene, and for dishwashing. So it's very important that you add water to your long-term food storage. The next mistake is buying foods you don't like. Why would you buy foods you don't like? Does it even sound like a good idea? But people do it. They maybe read a list that someone else has said, these are wonderful foods to stockpile, and they go get that list. Or they say, I need canned meat, and they go buy everything from roast beef, chicken, spam, to Vienna sausages. If some of those are foods that you wouldn't eat, don't get them. If you don't like them, you've wasted your money and your prepper pantry space. If you see a food you're not familiar with, but you think you might like it, buy one, take it home and try it. If you like it, you can go back and get more. It doesn't make sense to stock up your pantry with foods you've never tried that you may not like. The next mistake is buying foods you don't know how to cook. If you're not familiar with foods like quinoa, split peas, lentils, or how to grind whole kernels of grain to make bread, then that's not food you should be stockpiling. If it's a food you want to learn to cook, get a small amount, practice cooking with it, learn how to use it before you buy a huge amount. The next mistake is failing to have variety in your long-term food storage. If you just have rice and you just have beans, shh, those are great foods to have on hand, but they don't have any variety in them. You need some spices, you need some different types of beans, you need some additional food so that you don't get food fatigue. Nobody wants to eat the same exact meal day after day after day. There are a lot of different ways to add variety to your food storage by choosing different foods, different kind of spices, and learning how to mix them up and cook them into a variety of meals. The next prepper pantry mistake is not having foods for short-term food storage and long-term food storage. It's great to have rice and beans in case there's a long drawn out emergency, but most emergencies are for several days at a time. A power outage. We're at the end of the month and we ran out of money to go to the grocery store. Someone in your family gets sick or there's a winter storm and you can't get out. That's when you need to have some short term foods. Foods that are in your pantry that you can open and eat, heat up, do a little cooking, and you have meals for your family. But if you run out of all of those foods or things turn very bad in the world, that's when you go to your long-term food storage. The foods that are designed to last for 30 years. Rice, beans, oatmeal, dehydrated foods that are sealed up to last for 30 years. That's when you would get those foods out when you're running out of the other foods. You need to have a balance between short-term, long-term because on a day-to-day -day basis, we don't want to go open a bucket of rice and a bucket of beans. We want to go to our pantry and open up a few packaged and canned foods. The next prepper pantry mistake that people make is overestimating the lifespan of packaged foods. I've read that people say canned foods last forever, and that's just not true. I've been storing and stockpiling food for decades, and I can guarantee you there are cans of foods that will not last. For example, fruits and tomatoes, but especially fruits. The canned fruits just don't last. The acidity levels in some foods just prevent them from lasting forever. It's just not possible. I've had many cans of fruits, especially things like pineapple or mixed uh, like tropical fruits that have pineapple in them, peaches, apricots, 
they have just leaked and exploded, bulged, and were no longer good. You have to rotate foods. It, they have a sell-by, best-by, use-by date, which doesn't mean that they expire by then, but it can mean that. Many foods can last long past that date. But I've also opened up green beans long past that date, and they were blue and didn't taste right at all. But I've opened up lots of foods that were okay. It's best to rotate those foods within that guideline, but don't just throw away food because it's past the date. You can still take an outdated food, check over the can, see if it looks okay, open it up, does it spurt, does it smell, does it look okay, is the texture all right? And a lot of times it is still good and safe to eat. There's a tip, with oil, it will spoil. Foods that have oils just are not going to last like other foods. Brown rice is going to spoil. Peanut butter, even if it's sealed up tight as can be, I've opened out dated peanut butter and it was rancid. Don't rely on foods lasting forever and people who tell you they will last forever probably haven't really stored them forever and tried it and I actually have. And I can guarantee you that lots of foods will last, but don't count on it. I would not want to face an uncertain future, and the only thing I had left were a few cans and packages of rotten food. You don't want to take that chance. This is food that you really need to eat. You need to feed your family. You want it to be safe to eat, nutritious to eat, and top quality. So that's why we rotate the foods we have. Another packaged food that I keep hearing people say lasts forever are MREs, which is absolutely not the truth. If you look at the marketing guidelines, they tell you MREs were designed to last three to five years, seven at the most, and that's if they are stored in pristine, perfect conditions. People say, I've got boxes of MREs in my garage. They're 35 years old. Well, I've opened up 20-year-old MREs, and trust me, they were not fit to eat, and you should not be counting on food to last long past an expiration date. That is just foolish. One of the ways that foods become out of date and expired and no longer good to eat is because we make this prepper pantry mistake. We don't rotate foods. When we come in from the grocery store, we just add it to the front of the shelf. We keep pushing things back. But that's not the proper way to put food away. You want to rotate your food, just like they do in the grocery store. You want to go to the back of the shelf, push the food to the front, and then add your new food behind it so that you're constantly rotating the food. You want to have the first in, first out, so that way your foods get rotated. And it's true, I've made the mistake of things get pushed to the back or people forget they want to eat that kind of fruit, and then foods get out of date, but that's when you can go and open them and check them out and see if they're still safe to eat. But if you're trying to rotate your foods every time you put new food away, you're going to have far less of the problem of finding uh, outdated, expired, and no longer safe to eat food. The next prepper pantry mistake is not storing foods properly. When you bring home foods like grains, you need to put them into the freezer for a few days because grains naturally have little weebly things that are living in the grain. If you put it in the freezer for a few days, then get it out and let it thaw out for a few days, and sometimes there can still be little eggs that will hatch that won't be killed by the freezing, but then they begin to hatch so you can put it back in the freezer and thaw it out again. So the very best optimum way to prepare your grains for long term is to freeze, thaw, freeze, and thaw. You should definitely freeze and thaw at least one time. And you want to do it before you put it into your long term food storage containers and packaging because you don't want any kind of condensation to get in and damage your food. Then you can take your food and either uh, store it in a clean canning jar. You can store it in a mylar bag. You can seal it in a bucket. There are lots of different ways that you can seal up your food so that it lasts longer. There's not just one right way. There's many ways to do it. So don't get bogged down on if you have mylar bags, if you have uh, oxygen absorbers. The point is that you get as much food as you can and store it the best way that you can. 
And if you then get more canning jars or more buckets or more Mylar bags or oxygen absorbers, you can always go back and package the food in a better way later. But it's so important right now that you get the food and you store it the best that you can. Try not to leave things in their original packaging because you're allowing foods to get stale, they're taking up more room, and you're also allowing critters to get into your food, especially into your dry food, and then you get pantry bugs and infestations that can actually ruin all of your food. And you don't want to waste the food that you spent your hard-earned money for. The next prepper pantry mistake is not diversifying where you stockpile your food. Yes, it's great to have a nice, huge prepper pantry. Have you seen them in, on YouTube? People have these huge rooms that are just full of food. I don't have anything like that, and most of us, I don't think, do have those things. But we do have maybe a pantry or cabinet in our kitchen, but then you also want to store some things somewhere else in your house simply because if you store everything in the basement and you have a flood, all your food might get destroyed. If you store things, everything in your kitchen, and then you have a fire, all of it might be destroyed. Having varied locations helps you also to have a way to store more food. You still want to try to store food in a cool, dark, dry environment. So putting food away in your attic is not a good idea. It's too hot. Storing food in your garage or your shed probably isn't a good idea either, simply because it gets very hot in the summer, it gets very cool, and if you leave it down on the floor in your garage, it could be uh, damaged by water running in off of your car or the snow melting into it. So we want to find various places, maybe a hall closet you can add some things, add some big cans of food to the make a bottom row in your closet, add a row of food under your bed, look for different ways to have your food so that you can have more and then you also have it in various uh, different areas. But then don't forget where the places are. That's one of my problems is that I spread it out and then I maybe don't get back there or don't remember to rotate that food and that's how I've lost some of my food storage. That leads us to the next prepper pantry mistake is not keeping an inventory, not keeping track. Try to keep a running record of what you have and where you have it. Then as you use foods, write it on a list and replace them. You know that you're eating pasta and sauce, then you write it on your list and when you go to the store, you replace it. Or if you use one, then next time you go to the store, you buy two. Then you're building your stockpile a little at a time. The next prepper pantry mistake is underestimating how long your food storage will actually last. Most people need between 2,000 and 2,400 calories per day. So if you have a package of food that says six servings, is that going to be enough for two people for the whole day of serving for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Well, if you look in the serving sizes, 100 calories, it's absolutely not going to be enough. That's when you need to start adding up the calories in your food and figuring out what would I eat for breakfast, what would I have for lunch, what would I have for dinner, and figure also include some snacks. Then add up the calories in the food that you have and you'll realize then how long your food will actually last if you're keeping your family full. If you have 30 pounds of rice, 30 pounds of beans seems like an incredible amount of food. But if you actually look at the total calorie count in it, you may find that that will only last one person one month, and that's if you only eat that. Most of us, that's not what we want to eat, and that's why we add in other foods so that we have a variety and we don't go crazy just eating rice and beans. No one is suggesting that anyone live on rice and beans, but if you had to, you could. But it's not our choice. That's why we want to have a nice pantry full of a variety of foods and spices. And the last prepper pantry mistake is relying on the internet or your phone or something for the recipes that you have. If you know that you want to cook meals out of your pantry, write them down on a card. I have a whole variety of meals that I make out of my pantry. I call them pantry cleanout recipes. And I write those down on a card. Then I can go in the pantry, 
pull out the card, pull out those ingredients, and make that meal. I keep those cards clipped together, hanging on a little hook in the pantry. Then I have the recipe and the directions with the food so that I know what to do with it rather than just standing there staring into your food and trying to decide what do I do now? It seems like there's all this food in here but I don't really know what to do with it and how to make a meal. And then you don't have to stand there wondering, feeling like you're lost, overwhelmed or just hungry and don't know what to do next. Grab your cards, shuffle through it and then take the foods out and quickly make your meal. Make up a menu plan. Choose five of the meals on your cards. That also helps you plan your shopping. If you pick five of those meals that you would want to have the food on hand, write down the ingredients to those five meals and then you make sure that you buy them when you go to the store. Then if you wanted to make it twice so that you have enough for two weeks, buy two of each of those things. If you want to make those foods for four weeks, then make sure you have four sets of that food. So that helps you know how much food you have and know how to use the food you have. And then it gives you a plan of how to use it, when to use it, and how to rotate it. Food storage doesn't have to be complicated. Sometimes we, it just seems so big and overwhelming we don't know where to start. And the way to start is get a few easy to open and eat foods that you can have in your pantry, already prepared foods that you can open and eat, heat them up and use them, or just add water and a little bit of cooking. Then after you have several weeks worth of easy meals that you can make out of your pantry, then you want to really bulk up on your long-term food storage and that's when you want to have big supplies of long-lasting foods like rice, beans and dehydrated foods that are sealed to last for 30 years. But before you start buying up buckets of food that are lasting forever, ask yourself, what if I have an emergency next week and I have to eat the food out of my pantry? Do I want to start opening buckets of rice and beans? No, you want to go to your pantry and have easy meals that you can pull out and eat. And that's how you get a balance between long-term, short-term, you have an idea of what you're going to cook, how long it can last, and before you know it, you have all the things you need and you have the satisfaction and the peace of mind that you provided things to the best of your ability and then no matter what happens, you're going to make the best of any situation. If you liked my video, I hope you'll share it with someone else who might enjoy it. Learn more at alaskagranny.com and please subscribe to the Alaska Granny channel.